Hi everyone, one more time, Louis here, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about a little uh, of displacement and tessellation inside the new Substance Painter update. It was a highly anticipated feature, especially since uh, Substance Days last year. And I'm really happy that it finally came because uh, it will uh, vastly improve uh, our ways to convince details, especially for artists that want to take renders inside the iRay engine. And I particularly use uh, Blender Eevee for most of my client um, displays and especially renderings. But after this feature came around, I'm trying to test that in different ways, especially because I use lots of high information of my texturing. And with the new high information actually affecting the geometry uh, shader wise, this is really cool, especially for concept art and things that are not uh, product wise. So what exactly is tessellation? It's available here in the, the shader settings. There is a new uh, tab called displacement and tessellation. And you can uh, enable and disable that depending on what you want. I have a, a high information channel and you can see that on the silhouette here, the high information is now actually uh, deforming and uh, taking account uh, the, the different variations in depth. So in areas such as this one, it really takes account and, and makes for really interesting details. Here on the um, shoulders as well, you can see we have these interesting parts here that highly taking account of the depth information. And also if we enable, uh, I think, shadows, the shadows on the, the render actually take in consideration the high information as well. So, man, this is really cool. This is really awesome. I would be really amused to compare how the iRay settings um, stand up with the Cycles ones and uh, the Eevee engine. This one in particular, like after painting everything, I just jumped into Photoshop and worked on this steel image. This one is actually uh, took me two seconds to render. It was straight from Eevee, so it's almost like a, a print screen of your um, of your screen monitor, right? So uh, in here, I just used uh, a few filters to color correct a little bit of the smoke. The smoke also is everything made inside of Photoshop. So sometimes you add a little bit of glow to make it a little bit more foggy, uh, like just random PNGs of smoke scattered around. I also added a fake shadow to the shield to give a little bit of more depth to the image. So here you can see that. Here's just one more pass of smoke. Um, there's also a little bit of highlight, another pass of smoke. Uh, let's see here. There, there was a layer. Oh yeah, this layer here is actually the glow for the mono eye here. So the, the one that came with the render was a little bit, uh, not as shiny as I wanted. So I quickly added that as with a lighting um layer layer mode and there's probably another one another highlight here for the spear so i just added a second um glow to make the the metal shine more a little bit here you can see like a, some lossy details but on the overall composition of the shot it works it's working well fairly well Right. And yeah, by the Photoshop side of things, that's basically it. I mean, um, really simple, really 
just playing with the overlay effects and um, having some fun. And I will be experimenting a little bit more with the E-Ray rendering inside of Substance because of that tessellation uh, feature we have now. But in the future, probably uh, we'll have better workflows for using uh, parallax on high information such as these things here, right? So the this is running smoothly because it's a fairly low poly mesh and I can bring even two characters to the scene if I want but um, yeah as, as you can see like on the legs here we we can't simulate that detail yet so it's just an extra step we need to wait to a better solution to come around also uh, I'm using ambient occlusion to make the harsh shadows you can see here. A little of bloom effect, especially for the glowing parts, you know, to shine a little bit. And um, I really like using the Filmic very high contrast uh, profile because the base contrast, you get a little grayish. So you can bump more of your colors and more saturation using the high contrast one. And it works really well. I mean, it ends up being really beautiful. You know, of course this, I didn't bother rigging the skirt here. So that's why it's overlapping the leg. But in general sense, it was a good project to work on. Um, and yeah, see you guys till next time.